Yes, I would like to do that. Um, what a great weekend for our team and our fans and Husky softball. Um, it's just exciting to have an environment like this where we have sellout crowds, being able to watch these awesome players play the game. Um, have to give credit to Michigan. Um, if you would have told our team at the beginning of the year that we would find a way to earn a, a six seed and we would get the lucky draw of having Michigan come and play us, we would have probably said that's not very fair. So um, Stengel said it the best in our post game meeting that um, not one peep in the locker room at practice, you know, everybody else around the country is complaining about what what um, series is going to be the toughest for them and who got sent the hardest teams and all that. And Casey said our team never complained once. They just were ready to play our game the whole way through. And ultimately, I believe that's why we won the games. Go dogs. That's what I was saying. Go dogs. Now, did you feel like the picture was kind of going for the batters? Like, she hit Allie twice. What do you guys have to say about that? She's a competitive uh, pitcher. She's, and I don't mean non-competitive pitchers don't hit batters, but um, you know when somebody takes you yard, you're not going to want another person to do it again and repeat that. So she's trying to pitch around, and um, she literally pitched around her one time and obviously hit her the next. But um, that's what you know she's trying to do. She's trying to compete, not let one of our best players beat them. So twice you had it. Yeah, we had a lot of runners on base, a lot of, a lot of, we drew a lot of walks. Um, she walked a lot of our batters. So it was only a matter of time where it was going to be a clutch situation for one of these guys to come through. Um, it wasn't the time for it to happen, supposedly, <laughs> earlier in the game. And um, Morgan Flores, she had a tough at-bat. You know, she was getting pitched tough throughout the day. And she found a way to stay in the at-bat long enough to get a pitch to hit. And she hit that ball down the line. And that was all we needed. Morgan, what did you see on, on that bat? Um, honestly, I didn't really know what pitch it was. I just tried to look up in the zone. And she was getting me with the change up a little bit. But I just tried to stay in there and battle. And I got a pitch to hit, so. Coach, it was sort of the, um, the offense was a little down the first couple of innings, and then Kelly Burdick starts it off with an 0 2 triple to the gap. What did she give you a nine hole to be able to turn the lineup over like that? Yeah, um, well, just to be clear, um, that pitcher does have like a sub two ERA, so I mean, we got to give credit to the pitcher. Um, first and foremost, and we got to give credit to Taryn Alvello for keeping us in that game because we had more than enough opportunities to try to come through for her and we, we weren't doing it. Um, but just the, the fact that Burdick, um, you know, she's clutch. She came into January saying, I want to be a clutch player. I want to be a player that my, play my teammates can rely on. And I mean, she did the, just that. I mean, it's exactly what we needed to, you know, find a way to get a runner in scoring position and then pass the bat to the people in front of her or behind her and at the top of our lineup. For any of you guys, I mean, what did you maybe learn about your team through this regional that you I just think we solidified things that we knew about ourselves. We knew we could, you know, it doesn't matter who we play. Um, we're going to take our game to whoever our opponent is. And we did that three times this weekend against three or two different opponents. And um, we just keep getting tested. And we keep learning. And we're going to keep growing as a team moving forward. Um, I think it was awesome how she kept her composure. Like, her determination didn't hinder at all during the game, and we all feed off of that. So it's great to have a leader like her in the circle, taking it one pitch at a time, putting great pitches in great spots each pitch. So I think it's it was awesome that game. How was how was Betsa different today than yesterday, Allie or Casey? 
we have a nice morning too. <clears throat> How is what you were seeing from her any different than what you guys saw yesterday? I think it was pretty much the same. She only got to throw, what, one inning? She threw 20 pitches yesterday, so, so, we, so they all, only they got the looks. Yeah, I think only, like, five of our hitters hit. So, um, yeah, pretty much the same. We were just going with our approach, being aggressive, and we competed. So. Alan, what were your thoughts on being thrown at? Being what? Thrown at? Thrown at? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I wasn't. I mean, obviously, I was in there trying to get like a good pitch to hit, and then all of a sudden, the ball's coming at me, and I obviously had some thoughts like, "Are you trying to hit me?" But um, I mean, I'm just gonna get on base for my team, do what we need to do. I know sis behind me. I know everyone behind me has my back. They're gonna be able to get the job done. I have no doubts in that, and I know they're gonna have my back. And so, I was just taking one for the team. So you're cool. You weren't upset about it. I mean, obviously, you get hit. You're not really that excited that you gotta, you know. But she got um, on base. QPA. But I got on pay base, it's like two points on the QPA chart, so. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, um, three games, two five-inning wins. How many is it to uh, sort of keep Karen's pitch count down going into Superstar? Um, with this point in time of the year, you know, you could throw a complete game and throw 80 pitches. So the fact that we shortened some of those games, I mean, that's important. But I guess more importantly, um, is that Taryn just continues to improve and stay in the moment and know that her team has her back and we're going to score runs for her and it's what it is. It's pretty much the same thing. But um, yeah, anytime you can keep the pitch count down, it's important. But at this point in time in the year, as you're going to see throughout the tournament, most of the time you're going to see one pitcher and a half carry teams. Coach, talking about just the offensive production throughout the weekend, it seems like yeah, the lineup's in a good spot right now. I think it the the women know who is going to be where, and they know what to expect. Um, and then situationally, that brings some confidence to all of them and gives everybody an opportunity to achieve what the team needs, whether that's getting on base, moving runners over, scoring runners. Um, we've got some speed up and down the lineup. That's helpful. Um, if they pitch around a couple people, we know that the others can do it too. You guys have played Utah before, obviously so you ended the season with them. I mean, what do you take from that final series that you played going into this? Is it different now that it's postseason and it's basically, you know, the last chance and you're done? Yeah, I think it's just, I mean, Utah is a very, very competitive team. And our team understands that what happened yesterday, two weeks ago, doesn't mean what happens next. I mean, obviously, we all have information on each other. And, you, you know, ultimately, you don't like to see conference opponents match up to not both be able to go where, you know, we all want to go. But um, we just got to keep taking it one pitch at a time and know it's a super regional. It's best two of three. And that's that. Go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs.